Let's now shift our attention to the other big story that we are tracking here on Vyond. And this, of course, are the elections that have taken place in the southern Indian state of Karnataka, for which the election results are out. Now, the Bharatiya Janata Party has lost, and it is the Congress that has managed to win this election with a pretty big margin. So Congress is now all set to return to power in Karnataka, and BJP has ended up losing its only fortress in southern India today. And our next poll gets you more details. That's how India's opposition party, Congress, decided to celebrate its victory using a song from an Australian singer. The first big electoral face-off between the BJP and Congress since its leader Rahul Gandhi was convicted of defamation in March and lost his parliament seat. And this will happen in every state. In the Congress party, Karnataka, गरीबों के साथ खड़ी हुई हमारा हम गरीबों के मुद्दों पर लड़े और मुझे सबसे अच्छी बात यह लगी कि हमने नफरत से गलत शब्दों से यह लड़ाई नहीं लड़ी a win after a long string of defeats india's main opposition party has something to cheer about the party managed to stop the juggernaut of narendra modi's ruling bjp The Prime Minister was quick to congratulate the Congress party. Karnataka has a population of well over 60 million people, about the same as the United Kingdom and its capital Bengaluru is India's tech hub. The election is the first of five crucial state polls this year, seen as setting the tone for parliamentary elections due in April and May 2024. But despite winning, Congress has another issue to tackle. The biggest question is, who is going to be the next Chief Minister of Karnataka? Will it be Siddhi Ramaya or troubleshooter D.K. Shivkumar? Now all the eyes are on who the party will pick as the next Chief Minister of Karnataka. But experts opine that Indians vote differently. In the provincial elections, it all hinges upon local issues, ranging from caste to religion to jobs. But when it comes to national elections, people vote differently. क्योंकि वो जो कहते हैं आज वो मान चुके होंगे कि डेमोक्रेसी का खतरा नहीं है वो कैम्ब्रिज में जाके फॉरेन लैंड में जाके डेमोक्रेसी के बारे में कहते हैं कि हमारे देश में डेमोक्रेसी नहीं है और ईवीएम के बारे में कहते हैं बहुत कुछ आज उसके बारे में नहीं कह रहे हैं तो लोग उनसे जाके पूछें कि भारत के डेमोक्रेसी के बारे में आप वो क्या वो क्या मानते हैं और हमारे यहाँ के ई के बारे में उनका क्या राय है Karnataka is home to about 65 million people and is considered BJP's gateway to southern India as the party has struggled to win elections elsewhere in the region. Every party says after losing the election that they will introspect. I think BJP needs to go back to the drawing board because they do not have the local leadership and they do not have any agenda which is appealing to the people of the state. Most opposition parties which wanted Congress to lead them against the BJP, they will now find it easier to come to terms with the Congress because it has achieved something which is practically impossible. This sets the tone for a very strong, uh, uh, you know, contested elections in 2024, especially because the opposition parties uh, were not necessarily Congress are coming together or trying to come together and put a joint front against Prime Minister Modi's uh, BJP. The defeat in Karnataka is a rare blow for the BJP considering Modi remains highly popular after nine years in power and is favoured to win a third term nationally in 2024. And also joining us in the broadcast, we've got Mr. T.S. Krishnamurti, the former Chief Election Commissioner of India, is joining us on this broadcast. Sir, thank you very much indeed for joining us here in Vyond. Now, I, I want Thank to you. talk to you a bit about, you know, the logistics of conducting an election of this scale, considering the number of people who, of course, were eligible to come out and vote and the number of polling stations, of course, that have to be set up to accommodate all of these people. Now, the Karnataka elections saw as many as about 2,430 candidates who took part, for which uh, there were 58,000 polling stations that were set up. So just for one state and for the election to be held in just one leg, how much of a logistical challenge is it? 
Well, uh, conducting an election in India is indeed a, a great achievement because of the population, size of the population, voting population, as well as the geographical compulsions and conditions. And uh, a state like Karnataka, with um, nearly uh, 6.5 crores of uh, people, it's, uh, it has been a big challenge to the election commission. But the main lesson that you learn from this particular election is the fact that the electronic voting machines have proved their credibility. But very often, the opposition party, the party which loses the election, mm -hmm. immediately puts the blame on, on the election commission and the elect electronic voting machine. I am more than convinced that it is a robust machine and uh, there is no doubt about its credibility and it has proved itself because there should not be any impression that the ruling party has an advantage or an unfair advantage in using the electronic voting machine. Now, it is beyond uh, any doubt. In fact, in the recent elections, most of the state elections we have, we have seen, different results have taken place and that only goes to prove the credibility of the electronic voting machines. Absolutely. I think you've made an important point there, sir, because this was a question, you know, that, that will keep coming up election after election. But although, you know, today that, that's not an issue that's been discussed a lot, but I want to ask you a larger question. You've said that the elections today, they've gone on very smoothly. The counting happened and the fact that it is the electronic voting machines. So the counting is so much more faster. You know, but I want to ask you this larger question because there are countries such as the United States, for instance, such as Germany, who at a point of time did want to use electronic voting machines as a part of their democratic electoral process. But then they went back because they were not completely convinced that it is not possible to meddle with the electoral process by using EVM machines. You know, is, is there something that India perhaps should also look at? Because... No, as far, you know, as, in, as, far in, as the American election... The realms of possibility, you know, because the fact that it is an electronic voting machine, it is still as far as, possible. As far as the electronic voting machines are concerned, in the US, the machines were manufactured by a private sector form, firm, and it was not manufactured under government control. Whereas the Indian electronic voting machine are manufactured in defense oriented public sector undertaking with enough safeguards. Again, in U.S., the electronic voting machine is not in use in all constituencies because the states have to decide what kind of electoral uh, system should be followed. So some states use the electronic voting machine, some use conventional method and so on. But in Brazil, where the electronic voting machine is used, it's quite credible. Nobody has questioned its credibility. And in uh, some of the states, they have shown interest in our voting machine. But the only thing is they have not been able to probably market the voting machine in other countries. But I have no doubts about the fact that Indian voting machine is simple, is credible and robust. All right, point taken. Uh, my last question with respect to electronic voting machines, even if we say that for, because the electronic voting machine is not connected to the internet and therefore it is a system in itself. Uh, you know, in every election, there are these videos that start doing the rounds on social media of electronic voting machines being found in the vehicles of certain private individuals. People have raised questions about, you know, electronic voting machines being found in these individuals, and then questions are asked, how is it that these electronic voting machines well, that should be in the custody of the election commission that is conducting the elections are found with certain private individuals? There are clear instructions about the custody of the electronic voting machine, the transportation of the machines, etc. In one or two constituencies, it is true that these inspections were not complied with. But you cannot blame the electronic voting machine for that. It is the men who are handling the machines had failed to comply with the regulations. So you cannot blame the electronic voting machine. I agree that the, our training and our monitoring of the system has to improve. But by and large, in most of the elections, the electronic voting machines have been properly kept in proper custody and proper uh, arrangements have been made. The second point I want to make is the voting results clearly indicate that our voting system of first past post system seems to have outlived its utility because many places people are able to win with the 25% of the votes polled. Absolutely. The first past post system should go and we should insist on minimum 33 and one third percent of votes polled to be won by the winner. There are many countries which have introduced 33 and one third percent as a threshold 
There are other countries that have said 50% plus one, one uh, vote as a threshold. So we must change it. Otherwise, the people who are representing the, 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 the representatives elected are representing only less than 25% of the voting population. All right. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us here on Beyond and sharing those insights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.